Irish potato famine, the mass starvation. Hello curious people. In a world full of news about coronavirus, today we present you the subject. Irish potato famine, the mass starvation. The Irish potato famine, also known as the Great Hunger, starts in 1845, when a fungus-like organism called Phytophthora infestans spread rapidly in all Ireland. The infestation ruined up to one half of the potato crop that year, and about three quarters of the crop over the next seven years. Because the tenant farmers of Ireland then ruled as a colony of Great Britain relied heavily on the potato as a source of food, the infestation had a catastrophic impact on Ireland and its population. Before it ended in 1852, the potato famine resulted in the death of roughly one million Irish from starvation and related causes, with at least another million forced to leave their homeland as refugees. With the ratification of the Acts of Union in 1801, Ireland was effectively governed as a colony of Great Britain until its War of Independence in the early 20th century. Together, the combined nations were known as the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland. As such, the British government appointed Ireland's executive heads of state, Lord Lieutenant and the Chief Secretary of Ireland, and the residents of the Emerald Isle could elect representation to the Parliament in London. In total, Ireland have 105 representatives to the House of Commons and 28 to the House of Lords. Still, it's important to note that the bulk of these elected representatives were landowners of British origin and or their sons. In addition, any Irish who practiced Catholicism were initially prohibited from owning or leasing land, voting or holding elected office under the so-called penal laws. Although the penal laws were largely repealed by 1829, English and Anglo-Irish families owned most of the land, and most Irish Catholics were relegated to work as tenant farmers forced to pay rent to the landowners. It's funny, less than 100 years before to the famine's onset, the potato was introduced to Ireland by the landed gentry. However, despite the fact only one variety of the potato was grown in the country, it soon became a staple food of the poor, particularly during the cold winter months. When the crops began to fail in 1845, as a result of infection, Irish leaders in Dublin petitioned Queen Victoria and Parliament to act and, initially, they did, repealing the so-called corn laws and their tariffs on grain, which made foods such as corn and bread prohibitively expensive. These changes failed to offset the growing problem of the potato blight. With many tenant farmers unable to produce sufficient food and the costs of other supplies rising, Thousands died from starvation, and hundreds of thousands more from disease caused by malnutrition. Ireland continued to export large quantities of food, primarily to Great Britain, during the blight. In cases such as livestock and butter, research suggests that exports may have actually increased during the potato famine. In 1847 alone, records indicate that commodities such as peas, beans, rabbits, fish and honey, continued to be exported from Ireland, even as the Great Hunger ravaged the countryside. The potato crops didn't fully recover until 1852. By then, the damage was done. It is believed as many as one million Irish men, women and children, perished during the famine, and another one million emigrated from the island to escape poverty and starvation, with many landing in various cities throughout North America and Great Britain. The exact role of the British government in the potato famine and its aftermath whether it ignored the plight of Ireland's poor out of malice, or if their collective inaction and inadequate response could be attributed to incompetence is still being debated. The significance of the potato famine in Irish history and its contribution to the Irish diaspora of the 19th and 20th centuries is beyond doubt. Tony Blair issued a statement in 1997 offering a formal apology to Ireland for the UK government's handling of the crisis at the time. In recent years, cities to which the Irish ultimately emigrated during and in the decades after the event have offered various commemorations to the lives lost. Boston, New York City, Philadelphia and Phoenix in the United States, as well as Montreal and Toronto in Canada, have erected Irish hunger memorials, as have various cities in Ireland, Australia and Great Britain. The soccer team, Celtic, based in Scotland, was founded by Irish immigrants 
and many of whom were brought to the country as a result of the effects of the potato famine, has included a commemorative patch on its uniform most recently on September 30, 2017 to honor the victims of the Great Hunger. In 2012, a Great Hunger Museum has been established at Quinnipiac University in Hamden, Connecticut, as a resource for those seeking information on the potato famine and its impact, as well as for researchers hoping to explore the event and its aftermath. In the end, I would like to thank you for watching us, and I would like to invite you to subscribe and like our channel.